All right, so it's time to take a close look at the Super Console X after all of this time. Powerful performance, they called it. Also having so many different versions with a unique design and a completely different like era of game emulation. <laughs> Hey hey, welcome back to the channel. It's awesome that you're tuning in. In today's video we are going to take a close look at the basically where it all started when it comes to the Kin Hank and also all the game box jungle. This is the Super Console X. For the people who have no idea what it is, actually this is an all-in-one let's say device that we can play thousands of retro games with. With HDMI and even AV out output, this thing was quite ahead. I want to say ahead of this time because actually this was just an Android box uh, inside of a very nice fancy case. So over time I've been complaining about like say cooling performance and all kinds of things and they indeed like listen to it because they were improving all kinds of let's say different models where they released all of kind of different let's say versions there it was absolutely crazy so what happens to the box i think life happened there's only one controller in the thing and there is still a dongle so that is good Oh man, I've been sometimes being very chaotic with these things and didn't put them back in the box. The overall quality of the PlayStation controllers, it's kind of dusty now, but the overall quality is okay. They smell kind of chemical most of the time and that's it, you know, work on two AA batteries. Let's see, yep, I did remove the batteries. Otherwise it will drain instantly and they will going to be leaking in the inside. On and off switch and the controls were not like say the worst one out there. But how about the box itself? Is it still worth buying? And yep, you can still find it with a couple of stores now. But still, there are so many different options out there. This came with the S905 in the inside, another one meaning an old school quad core. And yeah, this thing has capable of running all kinds of 8-bit, 60-bit, Amiga, Atari, you name it, even all the way up to PlayStation 1. But yeah, is it still worth it? Because if you're going to be finding it, sometimes you need to still pay a premium price for it. So I've made all kinds of reviews of game boxes, but most of the time I don't even use this control that came with it. I was testing it and didn't like it. So I immediately switched to an Xbox 360 controller because it's more comfortable and way more convenient. But okay, so I have this Super Console X. I do wonder, did you pick one of these things up and are they still working? Mine still works, but I didn't use it that much after the review. Actually, because there were so many of these freaking things out there, it was absolutely crazy. They did a great job when it comes to, let's say, this Super NES overall design. At the back, we're having all kinds of connections, including at the side. So, actually, at the right side, we're having two USB connections and the micro SD card. So, the micro SD card, they were already using these, let's say, non generic brand versions. This is the 256 gigabyte. I think they were selling 64, 125, and two, uh, 256. And then at the back, we're finding the Ethernet connection having the input for the power supply and the output for the AV out and the HDMI. And we have an on off switch over here. That makes me wonder, where is my power supply? That is a very good question. So they were using a 12 volt one amp, so it's not going to be an issue finding one. I have a couple of them in my storage. This was the X-Pro, but it was kind of funny because the X-Pro was almost the same when it comes to the normal version. That is what they're doing all the time over there. It's like abusing and make it one, like say, jungle of confusing different namings. All right, so let's take a close look at the menu itself. Even this thing runs on the older Ami Alec and has a very slow CPU compared with the competition now, there is still a lot of stuff that we can play. So if you just want to play the old school stuff like an Amiga, Commodore, you can just play even all the way up to Amstrad, it's kind of cool. Arcade are some limitations, think about Mortal Kombat is running okay, but I've noted with Killer Instinct and let's say some other games like Tekken, MAME will not run on this. So there was a lot of old school stuff that I just wanted to showcase over here. And yep, there is Dreamcast support, but the overall performance is okay. I've seen a lot of games stutter, but overall we'll do some gameplay later on. So when this thing is quite old, and this is absolutely the beginning of an era of Game Box Jungle, there is still a lot of stuff that we can, but also can't play. And yeah, the improvements were not that huge compared with, let's say, the later models. And that is a general problem that a lot of you already know. And if you didn't know, now you know. Pressing start will give us the option, and this is what I love about these like emulated devices. We can just scroll to the settings and mess around with it. For example, going into the emulated settings and pressing always the wrong button over here, you can just see how it has been set up: 1080p, 
take consideration i'm guessing that there also will be an option for 4k support for televisions but it doesn't output 4k and also we don't have let's say upscaling so the emulation overall configuration is quite limited when it comes to that <laughs> the danger zone you love to call it but in here we're having all kinds of stuff like game modes we can enable the same game aspect ratio we can change it out if you want to and that's one of the things that i just love about emulic it's itself so in here we're having the information so version 3.9 having the free space so the temperature is 62 celsius idle i didn't i just booted it up and that's the general problem of these devices it still works i do wonder if other people have let's say problems with the heat itself that your system stopped working in here with the s905x and having a cpu number count of four so where I'm a huge fan of, let's say, old school games, the 16-bit era is where it actually started for me. Oh, by the way, with this particular game, it is absolutely fun. I always love to play it. I think this is actually one of the first games that I owned of my Sega Mega Drive, also known as the Genesis. In combination with the beautiful bezels, some people hate it. You can just turn them off if you just want to have like a 4x3 aspect ratio and not this overall as a configuration. But still, it's kind of cool to see these old school games and the boxes, the old ones, particularly this first generation one, runs just fine. But nevertheless, I already mentioned before that it is a problem when it comes to, let's say, the emulation performance of MAME. Some of the games will not run like in Killer Instinct and the later systems had the same issue. I think that was one of the downsides when it comes to these super conflict devices. Like later on we had like revisions like Pro, X3 and even X4, but the overall performance were mostly the same. And if you're like me and you just want to play some old school games like MAME, this was absolutely great. So when it comes to the input lag, I do sometimes have the idea there is input lag, but yeah, that's more like a personal thing. I'm really getting used to it very quickly when it comes to that. So where this device is absolutely amazing for some 8-bit and 60-bit games, we can also play a lot of PlayStation games on it. And I think it's one of those like absolutely memorable systems that I've played so much on. So particularly this game when it comes to R-Type, it's kind of funny that I didn't really experience R-Type a lot on let's say the new generation devices. But I was more, I think the latest version that I actually owned and still own and play is R-Type Delta. Absolutely one of the best shmups when it comes to the PlayStation 1. If you don't agree, let me know in the comments which like shmup is your favorite one on the PlayStation 1. <laughs> So where Dolphin Blue is absolutely, or Dolphin Blue, I mean Dolphin, <laughs> oh, Dolphin, Blue Dolphin, I see I'm completely stuck with this name. Nevertheless, when it comes to this particular game, it's absolutely awesome looking, but it is a hit or miss when it comes to the cheaper game boxes. A great example that we're pushing this device to the limitation that it has. Nevertheless, a lot of those games can still be enjoyed, not on the full frames per second, but this is absolutely a hidden gem. And don't forget the Sega Dreamcast on these boxes. I already mentioned before that it is going to be a hit or miss because it's absolutely difficult to emulate on these like, basic S95 chipset. But you will be surprised where some of the games has an overall decent emulation performance. But in short, is this thing worth picking up? I think not really, simply because it's outdated when it comes to Emmy Alec. It was 3.9 if I'm saying it correctly. And okay, you can play all the way up to PlayStation 1, but we're having so many different versions that can not only do more and better, but the overall performance so much better when it comes to the overall cooling. Having even one with a turbo fan on top, that was most funny, the funniest thing I think I've ever seen. But yeah, this thing is just an old school Android box with some Emmy Alec. You can just also make them yourself. Let me know in the comments, what do you 
think of the Skin Hank Super Console League? Do you think it's still worth it? And it would be great. Subscribe, hit the little bell, and I'll see you in the next video.